soloing in the minor pentatonic scale, G position, key of A. A one, two, three, four, and... <laughs> friends and welcome back to Swift Lessons for another lead guitar tutorial. In today's session I'm going to be showing you how to solo using the G position of the minor pentatonic scale. Now in section one I'm going to be showing you how to play the scale then also explaining the notes and the intervals inside of it. Then in section two I'm going to break down three variations of one of my favorite licks inside this position. I got a full tab and PDF study guide for you at patreon.com slash lessons. You can support the channel there for just a dollar a month and gain access to a ton of extra resources for all my popular YouTube guitar lessons. Now, let's get started. Okay, close look at the fretboard, getting started with a speedy little mini lesson on how to solo using the G position of the minor pentatonic scale. In this section, we're gonna be talking about how to actually perform the scale, but also the intervals inside it, which is very important for being able to play over different changes. Okay, so for this lesson, we're gonna be discussing everything in the key of A. Now, the G position of the scale, and really any scale, is called G position because it overlaps with the G shape on the guitar. So if we're talking about the key of A, we're just taking the G chord shape, bringing it up a whole step, transposing it to the key of A. Okay, so overlapping this chord shape, we're going to have this scale pattern. Okay, so there it is, the G position of the minor pentatonic scale. Let's break that down nice and slow. So we have the fifth fret of the low E string, that's an A note, your root. Then on the A string, we're gonna play three, five. Now remember, you have to know the names of the notes as you play them, so that was C and D. So A, C, D. Now on the D string, we're gonna play two, five. Okay, and that is E and G. So far you have A, C, D, E, G, and then you can complete the octave on the second fret of the G string, A. Okay, one octave. All right, then we're going up to C, fifth fret of the G string. Onto the B string, we're gonna play three, five. All right, so that is D and E. And then on the high E string, we're playing three, five again. All right, and that is G, A. Going through the whole thing, we have A, C, D, E, G, A, C, D, E, G, A. Okay, very good everybody. So you're gonna practice that over and over again, recite the names of those notes, really get to learn the fretboard. Then I want you to start thinking about the intervals inside of the scale. So that way, when you're playing over top of a given chord progression, for example, a one, four, five blues progression, you'll be able to follow that progression around by targeting certain notes within the scale. Okay, so that first interval in the scale was the one or the root. Then, when you're going to the C note, that's going to be called a minor third, also called a flat third. Remember, everything is in reference to the major scale. So C is the third note of the A major scale, flat it back one step, okay? So, the one, the flat third. And then, this is a very important note here. The D note is what we call the four. Okay, so this is the fourth scale interval. It's the note that you would go to if the D chord came into a progression. Okay, so A, C, D, also known as one, flat three, and four. Okay, then we have the five, another very, very important uh, note inside the scale because, we, again, we we're always playing over top of those blues one, four, five progressions. So that is the second fret of the D string. So one, flat three, four, five. All right, the G note is the flat seven. And then we're back to the one on the A string, second fret, A. Okay, so one, flat three, four, five, flat seven. That's the seventh note of the A major scale, flat it back one half step. And then we're back to the one on the second fret of the G string. Okay, then reaching up, we have C, another flat third. This little shape that we have here, this kind of finger position, is always a flat third on a single string, okay? So, 
very, very bluesy. So the one, the flat three, it's all repeating now. The four, that D note on the third fret of the B string, going up to the five. Okay, if you're jamming over a blues progression, this is the note that you want for the four chord, this is the note that you want for the five chord. Okay, then on the high E string, we have the flat seven again, and then we have the one. Okay, now going through the whole scale with the intervals. The one, the flat three, the four, the five, the flat seven, and the one. Okay, the one, the flat third, the four, the five, the flat seven, and the one. Now the most important thing that you can do if you're a blues musician is to outline where all the ones, fours, and fives are. So that way you can follow a typical blues progression. Okay, tremendous work everybody. You've memorized that scale, you've memorized the notes inside it, and also its intervals. And now you're jumping into section two, where we're gonna learn three different variations of a double stop blues lick. That way you'll be able to solo over top of a one, four, five progression. Okay, so slight variations to the same lick to accommodate different chord changes. Okay, the first variation of this lick resolves on A. So it could be something that you play over top of an A7 or an A minor, or it could be something that you use to usher in the arrival of the A chord. So starting it on the chord just before, and then making sure that you end the lick just as the A chord comes in. It's gonna sound like this nice and slow. A one, two, three, four, and one. Okay, then at full speed. All right, very nice little lick there. We're actually gonna start by sliding up to the fifth frets of the B string and the high E string using the ring finger and the pinky. Okay, then I want you to grab the B string third fret as you hold on to that high E string and you're gonna do a little hammer and a pull. Here we're actually using a little bit of the blue scale, that blue note for a little extra flavor. So far you have. A very bluesy sound. Then go to the G string fifth fret. Back to the third fret B. So far you have. Back to the G string fifth fret. All right, then go down to the second fret of the G string. And then go to the D string fifth fret. And then back to the root note A. You put all that together and we have. Okay, and sometimes I embellish that a little bit and I'll play. Go into that flat third bend in a little bit. And then back to the root note there, just in case you want to elongate that lick a little bit. Okay, now let's learn the same lick, but adjust it as if the D chord was coming in. Okay, so here's how I change that lick up just a little bit to usher in a D chord like D dominant seven. Okay, it sounds like this, nice and slow, and counting. Well, one, two, three, four, one. Okay, so there it is. Nice little roll there to get to the root note of the D chord. Okay, so it starts off the same exact way. Slide into five and five. Third fret of the B string with your hammer and your pull. All right, then we're going to the G string fifth fret. Back to the B string, back to the G string. All right, then, just a very simple roll at the end there. Three, four on the D string, and then go to the D note on the B string, third fret. The four in this scale position. Okay, great, now you can play two versions of that lick. For the A chord. For the D chord. And now we're going to learn one last variation for the E7 chord. Okay, so you're jamming in that one, four, five blues progression. You've made it through the one, you've made it through the four. Now the five chord is coming in. It's gonna sound like this. Our lick variated for the five. Just walking up to that B string fifth fret. Very, very simple. Starts off the exact same way, five and five. All right, you're hammering your pull. Fifth fret of the G string, back to three, back to five, and then simple three, four, five on the B string. All right, keeping that hybrid picket going, and then also keeping the alternate picking going. Okay, now we have three different variations. Again, for the A chord. 
you can embellish that. All right, very, very bluesy. For the D chord. And then for the E chord, the five chord. All right, maybe it goes back to the four chord. Okay, you can just kind of do a partial of that lick, a shortened version of it for shorter changes. Okay, then get back to A. Just like that. I hope you enjoyed this. All right, friends, thanks so much for checking out this lead guitar tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me hear your thoughts down in the comment section down below. Big thanks to my supporters at patreon.com slash lessons. Thanks so much for all your guidance. Thanks to you guys, I got many more lessons coming up. So keep checking back. Please subscribe, please share. This is Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia saying happy picking.